Hi all and welcome to day five of our countdown to Pentecost. It's day five of ten uh, and so congratulations if you've made it halfway. Uh, do keep with going, do keep with us uh, as we ask this, this question uh, of how can I know the Holy Spirit? Uh, how can I know that relationship with him and how can I grow in that relationship with him? And so each day we've been spending just a few moments to dive into some of God's words, God's word uh, that describes that relationship. Uh, and we're going to dive now into Jesus' words in John chapter 14. Uh, in John chapter 13 and through to chap uh, John chapter 17 and 18 a little bit, uh, Jesus has got time with the disciples around the Lord's Supper, around communion, in the upper room together. And Jesus is aware that this is one of the last times he will have to speak to them uh, while he's still on earth. And so this is a precious moment. Uh, this is a holy moment. There's an awful lot being shared and given and I'm sure at times the disciples, as they grapple with the thought and come to terms with the idea that Jesus is leaving, start to think, how can I hope to retain half of this? How can I grasp uh, what I'm being given here? And so Jesus gives them this promise in verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the counsellor, the comforter, the advocate, the helper, the come alongside of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I've said to you. So we have these promises here from Jesus that even though he's going away, he's going to send another. Uh, this is the day of Pentecost. This is the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy, his promise. Uh, this is affirmation that Jesus has risen and ascended on high because the Holy Spirit now has come. And he describes him in this way here, he will teach you and he will remind you. And so in some sense, in, in some way, uh, we're told that we are going to hear the Holy Spirit. He will teach you, or that word come and guide you into all things, into all truth, and he will remind you. Have you ever had moments when you're uh, reading the Bible or you're praying or you're talking to a friend about your faith uh, or you're in a small group uh, doing a Bible study together or, or you're in church on Sunday and there's just these moments of sheer beautiful revelation of, of discovery and you you see something of God you get you grasp something of Jesus that you've never got you've never seen before and a little part of you asks that question where did that come from well Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Or have you ever had those moments where you're facing a situation and there's just a, a, a query in your mind or you're talking to somebody and they ask you a question and in digging deep, somehow you remember something. Somehow you're suddenly reminded of something. And it's not, it's not like a new light bulb that's just gone on. It's kind of like an old dusty one that's just come on and blown the cobwebs off and you've remembered something. Uh, and you suddenly think to yourself again, where did that come from? Well, Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Isn't that an incredible promise that although we can't sit with others all the time in a Bible study or sit in church and be told what to do, we get a living guide who is with us in every situation who will teach us and who will remind us. This is what Jesus is like. This is what Jesus has said, either through his word or to you specifically, or he'll remind you of something that Jesus has done in your life. And as you share that, there's a sense of light bulbs going on, of light being brought in to a sort of gray or a dark situation. That's what we're promised here in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, when it comes to hearing the Holy Spirit or hearing from the Holy Spirit, uh, a lot of us can have this worry, and I think it's, it's a real concern, it's a legitimate worry. What if I think it's the Holy Spirit speaking, but it's actually just me? What if it's just my thoughts? Uh, or, uh, at other times, another concern, what if it's not the Holy Spirit speaking? What if it's an evil spirit 
that's trying to tell me something or inspire me to do something or cause me to believe something. Uh, and so some of us can be nervous about seeking to listen to and hear the Holy Spirit because how can I be sure that it is the Holy Spirit? Now, that's a big question. And what I'm about to say is not the whole answer to this question, but here in these verses, I think we get um, just a few clues, a few tests. Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will take from what is his and make it known to us, reveal it or translate it for us. So that's one question. Does it look like Jesus? Does it sound like him? Does it fit with something that he's already revealed through his word that we know is true about him from the scriptures and from our knowledge of him? Does it feel, does it smell like Jesus? Does it seem like Jesus? That's, that's a really key and clear test because Jesus is not about to suddenly say something that contradicts something that he's already been, been teaching us. Uh, revelation will always take us deeper into understanding who Jesus is and, and what he's done for us. He's never going to detract from that. He's never going to distract from that. So that's, that's the first test. Uh, and it's a test that we should ask when anybody tells us anything about Jesus, when we're listening to YouTube or reading a book or talking to somebody, does this sit comfortably with the Jesus that I know? from the scriptures. Paul says that, doesn't he, to another church, I think it's Galatia. If somebody comes and preaches another Jesus, other than the one that I taught you about, that you received from me, let them be accursed because they're taking you away from, from the real Jesus who saves and who loves and who rescues and who heals and who restores. So does it look like Jesus? Another question uh, that I think we can ask is, does it lift up Jesus? Because Jesus promises when the Holy Spirit takes what is his and makes it known to us, that by doing that, he will bring glory to Jesus. So that's another question here. Who's being lifted up by this thing that we're hearing, this, this thing that we're listening? Uh, is it Jesus? Is Jesus getting the glory? Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He never points to himself. He always points to Jesus and to the Father. Uh, it's beautiful, this, this relationship, always kind of, lifting up the other, always glorifying the other. Uh, so who's getting glorified? Is it this person speaking? Uh, is it us? Uh, are we being elevated to a place that the scripture doesn't, doesn't promise us? Or is it Jesus? Because if Jesus, this Jesus, the real Jesus, is being glorified, then we can be certain, we can be confident that it's the Holy Spirit who, who is speaking and prompting and inspiring. So now what? What does that actually mean then for us? Uh, on my laptop, um, I've got a sticker that Tim stuck on it, and it says, pray before opening. Uh, now, he stuck that there because he knows I'm pretty useless with technology. I, I'm okay with software if it's working, but as soon as something goes wrong, uh, he and others know that I'm, I'm straight away texting them saying I've, I've broken something again. But the, the sticker, pray before opening, did not come from that, uh, but from a session that Tim did with the young people. And he told them to stick it either on the front of their Bible or in the front of their Bible, pray before opening. And that's a really good thing to do. Before we pray, Holy Spirit, you who wrote these words, who inspired these words, who carried along the prophets who, who, who wrote down these things, would you come now and sit with me and speak to me? Would you teach me all things? Would you guide me into truth? Would you remind me of, of who Jesus is? That's one thing we can do. We can pray before opening. And then the other thing I think that we can do in our lives is to be open to the ways in which the Holy Spirit will speak to us. Um, it won't just be through words. Maybe some of us aren't big readers and uh, sitting with, with words for a long time is, is something that's frustrating or, or difficult. Well, the Holy Spirit can speak through other ways. He can speak through other people. He can speak through circumstances. Uh, he can speak through opportunities. Uh, he can speak at, as we speak. He, sometimes we're going to come on to this. Uh, he, he can give us words to speak. And so in serving, in seeking to do something, we can discover something about him and something uh, at, about Jesus. So pray before opening, but also pray before stepping out. Uh, Lord, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say today? What do you want to teach me today? And help me to be open to see you and to hear you and to learn from you in all things, in every situation. 
what's the lesson uh, what's the uh, what's the treasure that you're looking to give me do that today and, and, and watch as things unfold uh, and share with others the things that the Holy Spirit is, is teaching to you. Thank you.